Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday. So yesterday, a little story, I was walking up from recording my video yesterday and the moral of the story is that socks and slippery dorm staircases are not friends and do not get along and I ended up falling and putting my full body weight into my laptop onto the staircase and aside from a bent casing which makes my computer wobble on desktops now, my headset was completely destroyed and I had to go get another one from Fred Myers and this one has a couple of things that the other one didn't have but it is a cheap set that doesn't have as great quality as my old one did for recording so the audio is not going to sound as professional and I really don't like unprofessional sounding audio but that's what I'm gonna be stuck with for a little while so I apologize for what this sounds like now alright so let's get into the tropics this is the Atlantic here only real feature of interest that immediately jumps out is tropical storm Maria northwest of the Domin northeast of the Dominican Republic right now with her center right here here still on the northwest side of what convection there is and she's still getting sheared and the question is whether she's going to be sheared too much by this trough right here or whether it will actually benefit her a little bit by taking air out and baroclinically influencing her in here before she moves over Cadia's cold water wake which would probably knock her down again so chances are she's not going to get too strong and she may not even make it to hurricane status here but she'll be a strong tropical storm and she may be passing close enough by to give Bermuda some tropical storm conditions may pass close close by to Newfoundland as well on her way out which could bring them some weak tropical storm conditions but she will be a fairly weak storm by then she's not really going to be a significant big deal for anybody in here and she will be recurving out similar to Cadia we will be watching out here in the eastern Atlantic for tropical waves coming off we will be having a couple more of these coming across and during the next couple of weeks before September is out we may see one or two more storms develop in this area so we will be watching out there as the models are hinting at something in a few days but the bigger concern for land areas right now is going to be development in this I should actually circle farther up here this is going to be the Caribbean Bahamas and southern Gulf area and we may have to watch for homegrown mischief off the southeast coast as well in this pattern that we're coming up on. If we look at the GFS day 8, we can see low pressures trying to develop off of Nicaragua in here, and then by day 12, we have a storm in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And the GFS has been on and off on showing full-blown mature development here, and we will have to see if it actually starts to latch on. The European didn't show anything last night, just broad low pressure and no significant development. So the models are still you know not really excited but they are periodically supporting this and this is this is what usually happens because we don't have a tropical wave that's coming in and winding up in the western caribbean instead we have no wave or one that's not really seen on the model and we just have development occurring seemingly out of nowhere and this is what i've heard some people call pattern induced development which just means that the pattern north of it favors convergence in here and so you pile up the air and you get a spin up spontaneously in an area that is favored so without a pre-existing disturbance in other words and that can be hard for the models to pick out so they're fighting over whether this is actually going to occur now this is the Canadian ensemble mean sea level pressure for day 7 168 hours notice the big high that we have over southeast Canada and New England again when you get these big highs up here you have to watch south of them and the issue with this situation is now the models are starting to hint at the south of them part being homegrown mischief developing right along the south edge of the high off of the Carolinas and the Canadian here is showing that the troughing off of the southeast US is present and it's got several ensemble members generating low pressure out of this tropical or hybrid in nature we'll have to see which it ends up being and then we do have lowering pressures in the northwest caribbean the question is will something up here steal the show from down here or will we get two developments we're gonna have to watch out for that now if we look at the upper pattern this is the 8 to 10 day 500 millibar height mean european on the left gfs on the right now, these two were in pretty good agreement yesterday, but today they're disagreeing a little bit more. We can see that the GFS wants more of a trough over the Great Lakes, and the European wants more of a flat flow over southern Canada. And this is a theme that amplifies over time, with the European persisting on a flat flow, and the GFS tries to amplify this trough. Now, it's interesting, if we go out to the GFS by itself to day 12, look what we have. We have the trough over Alaska Ridge over the Rockies and then a trough axis over New England. Now what's interesting about this is this is actually also a dangerous pattern and you might say wait a minute now but a trough over the East Coast that generally means no landfalls. 
well, but we're not talking about Cape Verde storms coming up and recurving. This is not true when we're talking about storms developing in the Caribbean because guess what? Trough over here, they get drawn northeast and they get drawn over Florida, Cuba, and the Bahamas and you get action down in here. And what's interesting is that there's a special setup that usually occurs in the late season when we have late season storms, meaning mid-September through October, developing in the western Caribbean and north or northeast into the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, or Bahamas region and exiting out to the northeast. If we take the 500 millibar anomaly pattern on the dates of formation of all of these storms since 1948 that developed in the western Caribbean in the late season and moved north, this is what we get over here. We have that epic trough still over Alaska, ridge over the Rockies, and then a trough digging to digging into New England and generally cold temperatures across the East Coast and very warm obviously over the West and Central US and this is what we have very similar on the GFS day 12 trough ridge over the Rockies and trough over New England now it will be interesting to see if we actually get this because this day 12 here is a couple days later than when the models are actually forecasting potential formation. We could have stuff happening in the Caribbean by day 8 before this trough is even here. But you can see the reasoning for this setup. We have to first start with a trough because right now we have cold air during the next 4 or 5 days coming into the eastern United States because a trough has to dig in. We have to start with this because on the back side of these troughs you get big areas of surface high pressure and that forces the convergence down into into the Caribbean like we've been talking about for the last several days. That we have to start with a trough, then the model replaces it with a ridge, and then we go back to the trough. So overall this pattern is alternating, but the overall idea is that we charge the eastern United States with cold air, we bring high pressure into the areas that have seen low pressure all year, and then you force air down into the Caribbean, and we can start to get development here. The other thing is that the east, eastern Pacific is very quiet. And we haven't heard from the Eastern Pacific since its roaring start earlier this season. It's been fairly quiet, and we haven't had much development there. And we got some thunderstorm activity here, but that's not forecasted to really do much. As long as this is quiet, we allow the monsoon trough to come farther north than normal, and you start to get these monsoonal southwesterlies getting pumped into the Caribbean. If you have high pressure over eastern North America forcing northeasterly trades down to converge with them, guess what? It's like holding a can with your hands and then moving your hands in opposite directions. You get rotation in here and you start to get low pressure because vorticity is increasing and air is piling up and we'll start to see precipitation and thunderstorms increase in this area within the next week. So next week, I think this area of the world has to be watched very carefully and we might get some frontal development homegrown mischief off the southeast coast as well. So this whole area in here is getting primed because air is piling up in this pattern which should induce and incubate the possibility at least for tropical development and we shall see what happens here. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.